Hello everyone. Welcome to the episode that deals with the preposition and prepositional phrases and verbs and verb structure. Here we will discuss the meaning, types and functions of the above mentioned aspects of grammar along with examples. I am Sakshi and our subject expert for today's topic is Ms. Sabah Tariq, lecturer for English at the University of Jazan, Saudi Arabia. After watching this episode, the students will be able to understand accurate definition and usage of the preposition and prepositional phrases and verbs and verb structure, to understand the different types of verbs and prepositions along with examples, to expand and improve the skills of writing English correctly. Definition of Preposition there are approximately 80 to 100 prepositions in English language. Prepositions are words that introduce information to the reader. This information can include where something takes place, such as at the store, when or why something takes place, such as before dinner, or general descriptive information, such as the girl with the cool tattoo. Prepositions are also the words which show the relationship between a noun or a pronoun object and some other words in the sentence. They are always followed by nouns or pronouns. They are called the biggest little words in English because they have very important functions. <music> Roles of the prepositions Prepositions in the form of prepositional phrases provide specific information in a sentence for the reader. The reader would not know key and necessary facts about a sentence without a prepositional phrase. For instance, here is a bare bones sentence. My mom laughed. It is a perfectly good sentence, but it doesn't tell us very much. When we add a prepositional phrase, we better understand the situation. Here is a sentence with a prepositional phrase. My mom laughed at the joke. Aha, now we know why she laughed. Now, let's take a look at what prepositions modify. To modify means to give additional information about something. Whole prepositional phrases modify other words in the sentence. For instance, think about the prepositional phrase uh, to the zoo. In a sentence, it might read like this. My parents went to the zoo. The prepositional phrase to the zoo modifies the verb went by providing additional information as to where the parents went. Prepositions also modify nouns. Take a look at the sentence. Missy chose the couch with the leather-like surface. The prepositional phrase with the leather-like surface modifies the noun couch. Prepositional phrases can also line up back to back in sentences, much like box cars on a train. This sentence is extra long to make the point. Stella ate her breakfast in the morning under a tree without any company before the sun rose in Venice. We could have simply said Stella ate her breakfast. But the prepositional phrases add so many more interesting details to the sentence. This is a perfect example of why we need to use prepositional phrases in our writing. Prepositional phrases. Here are some examples of prepositional phrases. Under the deck, during the lecture, across the yard, after lunch, behind the tree. The word in quotes is the preposition and the words that follow the preposition make up the prepositional phrase. Think about a mountain for instance. A prepositional phrase is just about anything that we can say in relation to a mountain. Like to the mountain, over the mountain, under the mountain, towards the mountain. This is a good way to test a group of words in order to see if they do indeed fit the definition of prepositional phrases. The object of the preposition is the noun that follows the preposition. It is also the stopping point for each prepositional phrase. For instance, we might say, to the store, the word to is the preposition and store is the object of the preposition. Here's another example. 
in the light the word in is the preposition and light is the object of the preposition types of preposition the types of preposition are as follows preposition for time preposition for place preposition for direction preposition for agent preposition for instrument prepositional phrase prepositions for time in on at prepositions used for time of different natures are in on at etc preposition time nature in number 1 month or year for example in january in 1985 two particular time of day or month or year for example in morning in evening in first week of january in summer in winter third century or specific time in past etc example in 21st century in stone age in past in future in present on number 1 day example on monday second would be date example on the 5th of march march 5th third particular day example on independence day on my birthday at number 1 time of clock for example at 5 o'clock at 7:30 pm second short and precise time for example at noon at sunset at lunch time at bed time at the moment at the same time examples he was born in 1945 she will go to new york on 25th of march the concert will begin at 7 o'clock he gets up early in the morning we enjoyed a lot in the summer the president will deliver speech to public on independence day she received a lot of gifts on her birthday where were you at lunch time i will call you at 12 am preposition for place in on at prepositions in on or at are usually for different places in is usually used for place which have some boundary boundary may be physical or virtual on is used for surface at is used for specific place preposition place or nature in place having some boundary physical or virtual boundary examples would be in hall in school in a building in a box in a car in library in garden in america in room in cupboard on surface of something examples on a table on blackboard on a page on the wall on the roof on a map at specific place for example at the entrance at the bottom of class at front of the chair at bus stop at the edge of roof examples she lives in new york students study in library the wedding ceremony will be held in the hall there are some books on the table the teacher wrote a sentence on blackboard he was flying kite on the roof her parents were waiting for her at the entrance of school there was a huge gathering at bus stop his house is at the end of the street preposition for direction to toward through into prepositions like to towards through into are used to describe the direction following examples will help in better understanding examples she went to the library he jumped into the river he ran away when he left that someone was coming towards him preposition for agent by preposition for agent is used for a thing which is a cause of another thing in the sentence such prepositions are by with etc following examples will help in better understanding examples this book is written by shakespeare the work was completed by him the room was decorated by her the tub is filled with water preposition for device instrument or machine different prepositions are used by different devices instruments or machines for example by with on etc following examples will help in a better understanding examples she comes by bus daily he opened the lock with a key
prepositional verb. A prepositional phrase is a combination of a verb and a preposition. It is just a verb followed by a preposition. Prepositional phrase is equal to verb plus preposition. Some verbs need particular prepositions to be used after them in sentences having a direct object. Such a verb with its required preposition is called a prepositional phrase. For example, he knocks at the door. In the above sentence, knock at is prepositional phrase which contains a verb knock and a preposition at. Without the use of correct preposition after a prepositional verb in a sentence, the sentence is considered to be grammatically wrong. For example, if we say, he knocks the door, it is wrong because it lacks the required preposition at. So the correct sentence is, he knocks at the door. Prepositional verbs are transitive and they have a direct object in sentence. Some of the frequently used preposition verbs are laugh at, knock at, listen to, look at, look for, look after, wait for, agree to, agree with, talk about, talk to. Examples. She is listening to music. She looked at the blackboard. We believe in God. They were waiting for the teacher. Do you agree with me? Do you agree to my proposal? Someone is knocking at the door. You should not rely on her. Verbs and verb structure. A verb from the Latin verbum meaning word is a word part of speech that in syntax conveys an action, bring, read, walk, run, learn, an occurrence, happen, become, or a state of being, be, exist, stand. In the usual description of English, the basic form, with or without the particle to, is the infinitive. In many languages, verbs are inflected, modified in form to encode tense aspect, mood and voice. A verb may also agree with the person, gender and or number of some of its arguments, such as its subject or object. Verbs have tenses, present, to indicate that an action is being carried out, past to indicate that an action has been carried out, future to indicate that an action will be done. I washed the car yesterday. The dog ate my food. John studies English and French. Lucy enjoys listening to music. agreement. In languages where the verb is inflected, it often agrees with its primary argument, the subject in person, number and or gender. With the exception of the verb to be, English shows distinctive agreements only in the third person singular. Present tense form of verbs which are marked by adding s, walks or es, fishes. The rest of the persons are not distinguished in the verb. I walk, you walk, they walk, etc. Latin and the Romance languages inflect verbs for tense, aspect, mood, abbreviated TAM and they agree in person and number but not in gender as for example in Polish with the subject. Japanese like many languages with SOV, word order, inflects verbs for tense, aspect, mood as well as other categories such as negation but shows absolutely no agreement with the subject. It is a strictly dependent marking language. On the other hand, Basque, Georgian and some other languages have polypersonal agreement. The verb agrees with the subject, the direct object and even the secondary object if present. A greater degree of head marketing than is found in most European languages. <music> verb types. Verbs may vary by type and each type is determined by the kind of words that accompany it and the relationship those words have with the verb itself. Classified by the number of their valency arguments, usually four basic types are distinguished. Intransitives, transitives, detransitives and double transitive verbs. Some verbs have special grammatical uses and hence complements such as copular verbs that is be, the verb do used for do support in questioning and negation and tense or aspect auxiliaries for example be, have or can. In addition verbs can be non-finite namely not inflicted for tense and have various special forms such as infinitives, participles or geroons. (laughs) 
intransitive verbs. An intransitive verb is one that does not have a direct object. Intransitive verbs may be followed by an adverb, a word that addresses how, where, when and how often or end a sentence. For example, the woman spoke softly, the athlete ran faster than the official, the boy wept. Transitive verbs. A transitive verb is followed by a noun or noun phrase. These noun phrases are not called predicate nouns but are instead called direct objects because they refer to the object that is being acted upon. For example, my friend read the newspaper. The teenager earned a speeding ticket. A way to identify a transitive verb is to invert the sentence, making it passive. For example, the newspaper was read by my friend. A speeding ticket was earned by the teenager. Detransitive verbs. Detransitive verbs, sometimes called BG verbs, after the verb give, precede either two noun phrases or a noun phrase and then a prepositional phrase often led by two or four. For example, the players gave their teammates high fives. The players gave high fives to their teammates. When two noun phrases follow a transitive verb, the first is an indirect object that which is receiving something and the second is a direct object that being acted upon. Indirect objects can be noun phrases or prepositional phrases. Double transitive words. Double transitive verbs sometimes called VC verbs after the verb consider are followed by a noun phrase that serves as a direct object and then a second noun phrase adjective or infinitive phrase. The second element, noun phrase, adjective or infinitive is called a complement which completes a clause that would not otherwise have the same meaning. For example, the young couple considers the neighbours wealthy people. Some students perceive adults quite inaccurately. Sarah deemed her project to be the hardest she has ever completed. Copular verbs Copular verbs aka linking verbs can't be followed by an adverb or end a sentence but instead must be followed by a noun or adjective whether in a single word or phrase. Common copular verbs include be, seem, become, appear, look and remain. For example, his mother looked worried. Josh remained a reliable friend. Copulae are thought to link the adjective or noun to the subject. The verb B is manifested in eight forms. B is, am, are, was, were, been and being. These verbs precede nouns or adjectives in a sentence which becomes predicate nouns and predicate adjectives similar to those that function with a linking verb. They can also be followed by an adverb of place which is sometimes referred to as a predicate adverb. For example, her daughter was a writing tutor. The singers were very nervous. My house is down the street. Adjectives that come after copular verbs are predicate adjectives and nouns that come after linking verbs are predicate nouns. Some verbs are followed by an adjective phrase. The adjective phrase is called the complement. Noun phrase, subject, verb phrase, adjective phrase which is the complement. I, verb phrase, am feeling, adjective phrase, hungry. I am feeling hungry. Noun phrase, everyone. Verb phrase, looked. Adjective phrase, very happy. Everyone looked very happy. Noun phrase, this soup. Verb phrase, taste. Adjective phrase, awful. The soup tastes awful. Noun phrase, the milk. Verb phrase, has gone. Adjective phrase, sour. The milk has gone sour. This pattern is N plus V plus adjective, that is noun plus verb plus adjective phrase. These links are called link verbs. Some link verbs, for example, be, become, seem, can have a noun phrase as a complement. Noun phrase, our neighbor. Verb phrase, was. Noun phrase, a strange man. Our neighbor was a strange man. Noun phrase, he. Verb phrase, became. Noun phrase, a geologist. 
he became a geologist. Noun phrase, she. Verb phrase, seems. Noun phrase, a nice girl. She seems a nice girl. This pattern is n plus v plus n. Noun plus verb plus noun. Some verbs like give and bring can have two different patterns after them. Noun phrase, she. Verb phrase, gave. Noun phrase, some money, prepositional phrase, to the old man. She gave some money to the old man. Noun phrase, they. Verb phrase, brought. Noun phrase, a lot of food. Prepositional phrase, for the animal. They brought a lot of food for the animals. Noun phrase, she. Verb phrase, gave. Noun phrase, the indirect object. The old man. Noun phrase, that is the direct object, some money. She gave the old man some money. Noun phrase they, verb phrase brought, noun phrase the animals, noun phrase again in the context of direct object, a lot of food. They brought the animals a lot of food. These verbs are called double object verbs. When we have two noun phrases after the verb, the first noun phrase is the indirect object and the second noun phrase is the direct object. Some transitive verbs can have a noun phrase as an object. Everybody likes good food. George considered the problem or the ing form of the verb. Everybody likes eating. George considered starting again. We suggest that you read about verbs with 2 plus infinitive before doing this activity. Verbs with 2 plus infinitive. Some verbs have the pattern n plus v plus 2 plus infinitive. They agreed to help. We decided to go. Some verbs have the pattern n plus v plus n plus 2 plus infinitive. She told him to go home. They advised us to wait. Reporting verbs with that wh and if clauses. Reporting verbs with that clauses. Some verbs introduce a report, an idea or a summary. These verbs have the pattern n plus v plus that plus clause. When we want to say what someone says or thinks, we can use a clause with that. He said that I had to see a doctor. I thought that he was being silly. We can leave out the word that. He said I had to see a doctor. I thought he was being silly. With some verbs, we can mention the hearer as the object of the verb. She reminded him that it was time to go. He told me he was a friend of yours. These verbs have the pattern n plus v plus n plus that plus clause. Reporting verbs with wh and if clauses. Some verbs introduce summaries, reports, questions or problems. She explained what we had to do. He asked if I was ready. I didn't know what to do. These verbs have the pattern n plus v plus wh plus clause. She wondered where she was or n plus v plus if plus clause. Ken asked if we wanted to go. With some verbs, we can mention the hearer as the object of the verb. She asked me if I was ready. He told me what I had to do. These verbs have the pattern n plus v plus n plus wh plus clause. I told them what he was doing or n plus v plus n plus if plus clause. Ken asked us if he wanted to go. Verbs, questions and negative. Number one, yes or no questions. Yes or no questions are questions to which the answer is yes or no. Look at these statements. They are working hard. They will be working hard. They had worked hard. They have been working hard. They might have been working hard. We make yes or no questions by putting the subject they after the first part of the verb. Are they working hard? Will they be working hard? Had they worked hard? Have they been working hard? Might they have been working hard? 2. Negatives. We make negatives by putting not after the first part of the verb. They are not working hard. They will not be working hard. They had not worked hard. They have not been working hard. They might not have been working hard. In spoken English, we often reduce not to n apostrophe t. They aren't working hard. They won't be working hard. They hadn't been working hard, etc. A clause often has one or more adverbial phrases. The children laughed happily. N plus V plus adjective. 
all the girls are learning English at school in the second year. Noun plus verb plus adverb plus adverb. Last year, Mary and her family were driving to Madrid in an old bus. Adverb plus noun plus verb plus adverb plus adverb. She put the flowers carefully in a vase. Noun plus verb plus noun plus adverb plus adverb. The different verb structures. The structure of the clause depends on the verb. For example, an intransitive verb has the structure noun plus verb that is John plus smiled. A transitive verb has the structure noun plus verb plus noun. We plus had been playing plus football. A link verb has the structure noun plus verb plus adjective. She looked happy. A phrasal verb has the structure noun plus verb plus pronoun plus noun. She gave back the money. Or N plus V plus N plus P. She gave the money back. Conclusion. Thus, in this episode, we talked about two very important parts of speech, the preposition and prepositional phrases and verbs and verb structures. We also talked about their different types and their functions along with the different examples to make it understandable and easy for the beginners of English language. That is all that we had for you for today. We hope you enjoyed the session. See you again. Till then, thank you, namaskar and goodbye. Thank you.